Uh, a big thanks uh, to the organizers for giving me a chance to talk about my mentor, uh, Dr. Mavis McKenna, uh, and allowing me to honor her memory. Uh, my name is Bala Venkatakrishnan. I'm a senior scientist uh, at Beckman Coulter, and uh, I was a graduate student with Mavis and Rob uh, uh, about 10 years ago. So um, let me just switch to a pointer. Uh, yeah. So Mavis has had a remarkable journey. Uh, she's lived in three different continents, traveled countries, uh, and has a very strong uh, background in biochemistry, biophysics, and then moved on to structural virology, where she has stayed the rest of her life. Uh, and she has a, a, a very large toolkit. It starts at X-ray crystallography and cryo-electron microscopy, structural determination of virus capsids. Uh, but then really she has not allowed that to stop herself. She has either collaboratively or directly used uh, biochemistry tools, spectroscopy, mass spec, several other tools to understand several different virus families. Uh, most of all powerful viruses of which AAV, adeno-associated virus was really her favorite. To really understand Mavis's life story, uh, I recommend uh, watching or listening to uh, this particular episode of This Week in Virology, where she describes her journey in her own words. What I really want to talk about is uh, uh, the lessons that I've learned from Mavis. So officially, I was a Rob McKenna student. Uh, and Rob, uh, on my first day, walked me over to Mavis's office and said, hey, I have a student that we could share. Uh, and maybe work on AAV together. And Mavis said, sure, yeah, let's do that. Uh, and that's how my journey started. So Rob and Mavis have had an equal share uh, in their, their mentorship of me. Uh, and Rob has always been uh, a guiding force uh, uh, in, in Mavis's journey. And here is a photo of Rob, uh, you know, guiding Mavis through the busy streets of Toronto. Lesson number one that I learned from Mavis is, uh, Stop not until the goal is reached. And because it's Mavis, it's the extreme edition of this. So our typical uh, AAV study uh, would start with us uh, taking some AAV, purifying it, throwing it into crystals. We will then freeze the crystals, put it in a doer. Uh, we will drive from Gainesville, Florida to Ithaca, New York. It's about 20 something hours. Uh, and then we will collect data on them, X-ray crystallography data at the chest synchrotron there anywhere between 72 to 96 hours. Mavis would do most of the driving and most of the data collection. And then we would use some fun math and get back some useful structures out of this. So Mavis kind of really pushed herself. She would do this every few months. And then she applied the same principle to the AAV story as well. So uh, Mavis, this is a uh, highly simplified schematic of the AAV life cycle. And Mavis was interested in every part of the life cycle. Wherever the capsid was involved, Mavis was involved. So everywhere there's a number, there was a Mavis student working on it. Uh, and my focus really is to, uh, was uh, uh, on the endosomal trafficking pathway. So the AAV capsid has an N-terminal BP1 unique region that's located on the inside of the capsid that has to be externalized at some point within the endosome and it can say, contains a phospholipase uh, A2 domain that'll help remodel the endosomal membrane and help it escape uh, the endosome and get its way to the nucleus intact. So this is what we wanted to study together. So lesson number two from Mavis helped me study that. So Mavis's most endearing quality was her perseverance and everybody knows that, uh, but Mavis also knew to pick her battles. So with AAV, what we first did is we tried and solved the crystal structure of the AAVs at different endosomal pHs. And we were actually successful with that. We could actually grow these crystals at different pHs, go ahead and solve the structure. And we did not get a whole lot of structural information out of it. Nothing that really said, oh, this is solving your problem and telling you how this uh, virus manages to escape the endosome. So that was kind of a dead end. So Mavis said, how about we use circular dichroism to map this? And so what we did is we could we had this neat little assay where we uh, mimicked different endosomal pHs and found that the BP1 unique region, which is predominantly alpha helical, loses its helicity as we decrease the pH. And at one point, when you restore the pH back to 7.5, it's able to refold back to the regular structure. 
So based on this, we were actually able to build this model. So what I'm showing you here is sort of the pi four four, and we're looking at it uh, at, at a cutaway of that. And we have the VP1 unique region located on the inside of the capsid. And what we think may be happening is the VP1 unique region uh, unfolds and then is allowed to thread through this pi four four. And once it's outside of the capsid, uh, in response to maybe physiological pH or maybe in contact with the endosomal membrane, it's able to refold and carry out the phospholipase function. We don't have entire uh, evidence of this, but we believe that this is what's happening with our uh, CD-based data. But then I told you, Mavis's most enduring quality was her perseverance. So once the cryo-EM resolution revolution happened, Mavis really jumped back on, went ahead and solved uh, about 30 or more structures of the AAVs, including this snake AAV, uh, just getting a little exotic here, uh, uh, where she found that the N-terminus keeps uh, losing uh, order as we decrease the pH. Uh, and even at the 544, there is actually an expansion that occurs uh, of this HI loop that allows uh, maybe for the threading out of the VP1 unique region. So she's been building a lot of different clues uh, as to what's happening for the capsid at, at these endosomal pHs. Lesson number three from Mavis is to pay attention to the small details. And then this picture, you can actually see the McKenna Lab Quidditch team, uh, they're color-coded, uh, their positions on the team, uh, they're all color-coded. And so Mavis also liked to color code her AAVs. So every one of Mavis's students should be able to tell you in their sleep which color corresponds to which AAV. And every one of Mavis's publications would have that color code. So you can easily pick that up. So now when I show you this figure, you know that this is AAV2. So here, what I'm uh, showing you uh, is Mavis's data on uh, di uh, differential scanning fluorometry of various different AAVs. She did these at different pHs and found that there was actually an optimal pH associated with this. The logic of doing this was to try and understand the stability of these capsids, because these capsids do stay intact when you allow them to traffic and externalize the VP1 unique region. So what we wanted to really understand is how does the capsid actually stay intact uh, through this whole process? But actually, one of the side effects of this, we use citrate phosphate as a buffer to mimic these different endosomal pHs. Uh, our, uh, uh, real uh, aim was to try and understand the basic science of it. How does the AAV uh, manage its way through the trafficking system? But what we actually found out is this actually is a start point for clinical formulations for various different AAVs. And several different gene therapy companies now use Mavis's formulations as a start point uh, for some of their clinical vectors. So this was an unintended consequence uh, but it's uh, an important testament to the fact that Mavis paid attention to a lot of these details and the quality of the science that went into this is what has allowed this to be carried over. A big lesson that everybody can learn from Mavis is how to make friends. Uh, here's a representative image. Of course, Mavis had lots of friends. Uh, uh, an image of Mavis's friends is not complete without Becky Dutch and several others. Uh, but I chose this photo. It has my postdoctoral mentor, Adam Zlotnick, in it. Mavis taught me how to make friends. And I made a lot of friends uh, during my journey with AAVs. Uh, you know, uh, I should point out Vamsi, Brian, uh, Max, Nick Majiska, Jude Smolsky, uh, Arvind, several others who involved themselves in this AAV journey. Uh, Han Ju from the McKenna Lab, who started some of uh, the trafficking work uh, that I took over and then passed on to Antoinette, Bridget, and more recently, Justin, Josh, and Mario, who've been able to construct this neat little story and try and understand what happens with the virus. One of the last few remaining things that we need to understand about uh, the AAV biological process. The final lesson that one can learn from Mavis is how to be a good mentor. This is a picture from the annual McKenna uh, Lab reunion. So every one of Mavis's students have different reasons. I've shown you a good few reasons in the past few slides, uh, but they have different reasons for why they're so devoted to Mavis. Uh, my reason uh, really, uh, apart from the stuff that I've shown you, is the fact that she continues to mentor her students. She continued to mentor me well past my departure from the McKenna Lab. Uh, and 
to, uh, as testament to that, I'm just sharing with you my very last uh, text exchange with Mavis. And with that, I thank you, Mavis, and thank you for listening. <laughs>